I think one of the, the, the most significant things that have happened in prostate cancer last decade has been the, the molecular targeted imaging with, uh, with PSMA, uh, flucyclovine to a degree. And uh, coupled with that has been this whole concept of theranostics and um, the, you know, the remarkable success with lutetium. And um, like a lot of things that are successful, um, sometimes it's a supply and demand issue. And um, the, just because of some of the data and things like that, and, and what people have, have communicated to each other about responses, that it's been overwhelming. And that's sort of taxed, uh, overtaxed the production. So the, the question is you, as a, a, a medical oncologist, um, and uh, you're associate professor at UCLA, and uh, full professor at UCLA. Oh, now a full professor. At associate UCLA. at, at okay. CNET for some reason. But, okay, yeah. great. Uh, and uh, that uh, you have uh, you have a lot of experience with advanced prostate cancer, and, and, and so what's been the impact of this on your practice? Oh gosh, so how the, many patients have you treated with lutetium so ooh, far? Myself, probably about fifteen, but at Cedar Sinai, we've probably treated about uh, twenty patients, mm -hmm. twenty to thirty patients now, mm -hmm. both on on trial and off. Um, but the experience with it has been absolutely phenomenal. So even patients who have had multiple rounds of uh, multiple types of chemotherapy, hormonal manipulation, experimental immunotherapies, if, if their skin lights up, the um, the benefit they receive both in terms of disease control and adverse events has been really remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, guys who really thought that they were going to have to start thinking about um, you know, nasty, either nasty experimental therapies or really just saying, I'm, I'm done, have come back and they're, they're, they're moving. I had a, a couple that just moved from Colorado to, um, to the West Coast to be with their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And you know, his PSA was rising through, through um, second, third line chemotherapy. He's, he's moving stuff into his house. So, so with, uh, with the, uh, as you well know, there's been sort of a, a, a halt in the uh, delivery and production. Oh, what, yes. it, 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 what, what effect does that have on, on you and your practice so far in patients? Yeah, this, this, is, this is causing a real strain in, uh, in my practice and in the community at large. Mm -hmm. um, there are a certain number of centers around the country that are, that are able to, uh, quote unquote, able to give this drug, but the slots are being rationed out. Um, patients who are on it are concerned that you know the doses will be delayed, though they they know they're guaranteed to get them, and it's causing a lot of stress in, in the community. But for so it's patients. More, more more for new patients than, than yeah. the ones currently on it. That, that's the thing. So the patients who are on are worried about delays, but there I have a queue now of I think I have at least six patients who are, who are waiting. And the word for on high right now is that without, um, without the establishment of a supply chain, mm -hmm. they're not guaranteeing any starts for me un until uh, about a month and a half from now, which for someone with advanced prostate cancer, which has progressed through multiple lines of therapy, is it, yeah. it's, uh, like it's an eternity in a way, but at least there's a light at the end of the tunnel there. I, you know, yeah, let's, let's just going. hope so. I mean, I, we sort of, even if you take a step back, experience this when uh, when some of the molecular targeted imaging scans came out, like right. fluciclovine, we had to wait for that for a long time or send people away. Same with PSMA. It's true. And you know, I think it's just a it, it, it's a offspring of the successfulness of this treatment and uh, the demand for it. And who would have predicted it would have been like this? You know. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to offer to somebody. Uh, it's wonderful to see them get, get through the treatment so, so well and have that benefit, but it is a heartbreak to know that and to see someone waiting uh, for, for something that is, that is life sparing, that's highly effective. Um, and um, it, it's really kind of one of, it, it's truly a, a revolutionary therapy for a field. Well, well, we'll get through it, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bad thing and a good thing to have that we have. That, you know that it's happened, but 
what we have in our armamentarium, another arrow in the quiver is important. I, I completely agree. And hopefully, you know, forces around, around the problem, um, even at, at governmental levels, will help to ease this, this problem, um, make it easier for patients to get. Right. I mean, it seems like uh, this is an option. I mean, there's a, there's a shortage of a lot of uh, things uh, around, you know, drugs out there, insulin, lidocaine, this thing. It's, it's amazing. We gotta, we gotta stop it. Okay. Any other comments? And it was always a pleasure to talk to you and no, uh, thanks, to go over these things. Uh, I, it's always an honor to be part of your conferences. Thank you for being here. Hey. All right. Take care.